Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we are here for day four of the 12 days of Litmus, this being my favorite novel. And um, I think I've played coy long enough in attempts to not be boring to people who have watched this channel for the better part of two years. Two years now, been doing this, and I still can't figure out audio problems. But hey, we're here for literature, not audio. And um, I can't really dance around this one. I picked a different favorite short story. I picked a favorite different poem. Um, I can't pick a different favorite novel. For me, my favorite novel is Fight Club. Maybe it always will be. I can't tell at this point. But there, there were other cases I probably could have made. But instead, I think that it would be more fruitful to, instead of simply attacking Fight Club as my favorite novel, sort of try to find a different way to explain why. Fight Club is my favorite novel because I found Fight Club when I had to have it. And I think that that's, I think that's why a lot of times young adult literature ends up being someone's favorite book because they find it at a time when they absolutely needed it. And um, that for me is absolutely true about Fight Club despite the fact that I found it much later on. First off, I talked a little bit yesterday about uh, the danger of treading too close to thinking stuff that you like to read is the only stuff that's good to write. For me, that good stuff was originally Hemingway. And uh, as, a, as a writer, as a craftsman of the language, I could emulate the cadence close enough um, that, that my writing could read like a hammer version film of the real monster. It was sort of there on screen, but not real. Uh, you could see the zipper in the back, you know what I mean? But as an idealist, as a creator, my stuff was so different from Hemingway that the results of trying to write it through Hemingway's voice were utterly embarrassing. It was like putting a DVD into a VHS sleeve. Um, do people still have VHSs and DVDs? I, I, I don't know. Um, I was extremely disappointed with my computer when I found out that there was no disk drive. So I'm old fashioned, uh, outdated probably. But anyway, they are the, ta the same type of storytelling, uh, but they are used in very different ways. You can't put a VHS into a DVD player or DVD into a VHS player and expect very good results. Fight Club, the novel, is close enough to Hemingway as a craft that you can feel the cadence of the delivery, but the energy is so different that you can't really describe the writing styles as similar. Uh, it is through the energy of Fight Club that the novel makes its impact. Uh, and sort of a way to describe that on a sports level, reading Hemingway is like a fight with Floyd Mayweather, where you get picked apart and picked apart and picked apart, and at the end you're sore and bloody and you lost. Whereas Fight Club is like stepping into the ring with Mike Tyson, and after a few body blows, he lands one of those patented uppercuts, and it's lights out. But they push you back into the ring for round two and round three, all the way through 12 rounds. That's how Fight Club feels versus how Hemingway feels. And this is sort of how I found Fight Club when I needed it as a writer. But I also found it at the perfect time for myself as a reader. And those two things, if you do consider yourself a writer, you understand the difference there. There's a mechanism for which taking in the craft is different than taking in the story. Anyway, I was at university uh, studying to be an English teacher, so I had, I had literature courses, I had pedagogy courses, and I had English pedagogy courses. In the pedagogy classes, uh, the classes which teach you about teaching, we heard so much about how young boys were failing. Uh, they were falling behind in the classrooms, they were falling behind in standardized tests. This was happening as early as grade school. 
but the pedagogy teachers would egg me on. This was happening especially bad in English classes. So being a male that would be teaching at the high school level for English, I might be afforded um, an in with those students that they don't get very often because there were not, there are not very many teachers of English in the high school realm, which are male. Um, and it's no real wonder that boys, especially in English, are, are struggling. Uh, throughout my own dereliction towards the literary pursuits, my male peers have called me weird and a sissy, and female peers uh, have called me uh, lame or boring. They don't want to hear that you're staying in to write a short story, right? No one wants to hear that, male, female, regardless. Um, uh, anyhow, uh, most of my English courses, despite their titular designation, most of my literature courses, despite their titular des designation, were aimed towards feminist theory. Uh, and discussions, as well as essays, were cattle prodded in the same direction. Uh, oftentimes in uh, the syllabi to courses, they would have suggestions for uh, essay, what you would write your essays about. Almost always, three to five out of ten suggestions would be feminist in their slant. These were people to whom Andrea Dworkin served as a sort of queen. Thereafter, uh, most English pedagogy courses were taught by English literature professors, um, not the faculty f that taught pedagogy, pedagogy courses. Uh, and they were aimed, at, these English pedagogy courses were always aimed towards incorporating girls into lesson plans. How can we get young girls involved in this? And if you raise the point that it was in fact boys who seemed to struggle with English class, well, who really cares? All of this was sort of leaving me with a poor view not only of academe, but the pursuit of literature in general. Maybe it was not for men. Maybe it was not for me. Perhaps I would stick with reading and steer away from literature at large. And then I found Fight Club. And Fight Club is not simply a masculine text. Fight Club is a text that is uh, aggressively and unapologetically masculine. It gives in to the tribal impulses as well as the need for solitude, as well as uh, the primal satisfaction of providing and protecting. And shit gets blown up. It is equal parts nihilistic and constructivist, which is a delicate blend, and if you can walk that line, you really stand to profit from the dual nature of people. And in the Andrea Dworkin filled, fueled drunkenness of the university level liberal arts program, classrooms, I found balance and I found mindfulness in this poem from Fight Club. Worker bees can leave, even drones can fly away. The queen is their slave. And that is sort of my story with Fight Club and why it means so much to me and why I am so willing to go back to that text and go back to that text and mine out any little bits I might have missed the first few times. So that's it for day four of Litmus and I hope to hear to have you back here for day five, which is my favorite haiku. Welcome to Strip Cover Lit.